All right, welcome everybody back to the next presentation, specification, and welcome all the new people. My name is Amy Vincent. I am the manager on the one-time buy team, and assisting me with the class is Sean Hoover. He is the supervisor on the service maintenance blanket order team. We will be switching back and forth on the presentation for the specification class. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. So let's get started. With the first slide is the topics we are going to discuss. The very first thing we're going to discuss is the defini definition and purpose of a specification, the important, importance of a clear specification, the review tips on writing, specifications, information to include on a shopping cart. We are going to test your knowledge on a specification, and we are going to answer questions. So before we get to the definition of a specification, most of you have submitted shopping carts with specifications to the Office of State Procurement, and I'm sure many of you have had your shopping cart returned to you needing more detailed specifications or clarifications on specifications. So hopefully after this presentation you will have a more concise understanding of what the Office of State Procurement needs when you submit your shopping cart. So what is the definition of a specification? Specification means any description of the physical, functional, or perform performance characteristic of an item or the nature of a supply, service, construction job, or a major repair. It may include a description of any necessary requirement for inspecting, testing, or preparing a supply service or major repair for delivery to your agency. What is the purpose of a specification? It is to serve as a basis for obtaining products or services that are suitable for the state's needs in a cost-effective manner. To better describe the best product or service at the best price. What is the importance of a clear specification? It eliminates protests that delay procurement. It helps bidders better understand your requirements. And bids cannot be evaluated on criteria that is not included in the specification. So we're gonna do a little example. Let's say your office needs to buy a garbage can. And we're not considering the amount of money budgeted for this so seems pretty straightforward, right? Something to throw trash in. Well, let's take a look at all the different types of garbage cans you can actually buy. As you can see, there's a ton of them. Colors, sizes, shapes, the material they're made out of. Some of them have protections against scavengers at the state parks. It's a whole different variety of things. So questions that you want to ask yourself, what size do you want? Do you want a big one? Do you want a small size? Do you want a large size? What color? you want green, red? Does it matter? What material you want it made out of plastic, metal, wood, stone, any other material or a mix of uh, different materials? Do you need a cover? If so, is the cover attached, removed? Does it lock? What shape? Square, round, oval? Or does that even matter? Does it need to be scavenger resistant? And what features must it have? Foot press, wheels, cigarette disposal? These are different types of questions that an agency needs to ask when writing specifications for any product or service, no matter how basic or simple you think it is. You are the only one who truly knows what you need. At OSP, we're willing to help you with specifications on a bid, but if you don't tell us what you need, there's no way for us to know. 
and no way for a vendor who is bidding on the solicitation to know either. And once we get to the point of awarding a bid, if a special feature or service is not listed on the bid, we cannot go around a low bid vendor who is not quoting that feature. So just remember that if it's not listed on the bid, we cannot go around a vendor for something that's not listed. So next we're going to write and give you some tips on how to write a clear specification. A good specification should be clear, concise, and based on actual needs. You will want to work with your end user to develop these specifications so that you can describe requirements generically rather than brand specific when possible. More tips, you want to provide enough detail so that the bidder understands the requirements. You want to avoid exact, exact sizes or weights and consider ranges when possible. So you want to eliminate mandatory requirements if not vital to the function of the purchase. Another thing in writing for specification, which happens a lot it seems, is don't copy brochure marketing language. A lot of times these just feature have features of the items that you're trying to procure and that's not really a specification, more of an opinion on a lot of items. You want to also use measurable language and avoid being too vague. And you want to describe any kind of delivery such as uh, do you need an elevator, are you on the second floor, do you need a forklift to unload, do you have a loading dock, all this should be included. Warranties, installations, or training requirements, any of that should be also listed in your specification. You want to indicate any special options the vendor is expected to include. You want to identify instructional materials or service manuals if required. And if the, spe if the specification is for maintenance, identify the frequency and extent of required services. Another thing you want to also do is indicate the packaging requirements and be open to alternatives. So say you want um, honey buns and they come 20 to a case. Or would you be open to receiving, say, 40 to a case? That's just something that you want to keep in mind for packaging as that's, you know, to make your specifications more clear and concise. Also, they should be competitive. And also, you need to understand the meanings of these words. We see these a lot listed in specifications from agencies. Shall means imperative. May means permissive. Should means it's desirable. And means it has both or multiples, or means either is acceptable. Information that should include on a shopping cart. Item or service description, correct commodity code, suggested vendors, correct unit of measure, your estimated cost, exact or estimated quantities. Uh, you also want to include special delivery requirements, kind of what I touched on earlier about making sure there's a forklift if you need to unload or a loading dock or what floor are you listed on, special packaging requirements if they have to come in a clear wrapper or whatnot, uh, award formula, is it a group or all or none award? Site visit information, is it a mandatory um, job site visit or is it a non-mandatory job site visit? Any licenses or certifications needed to, pro to complete the job? And any other special requirements on the terms and conditions? So it's a balancing act. So first, you can provide too little detail or too much detail. On the agency side, it's not the right size, or we'll hear it doesn't have all the features we need. It doesn't match what we use now. It won't get here in time. But when you use too much detail, vendors often say, only this brand can meet those specs. I can't bid at all. I could bid a lot lower if the specs weren't so restrictive. I want to protest these specifications. All right, so we're going to have a little pop quiz. So, 
a specification that limits bidders to one particular brand and model of equipment is known as what? Proprietary, restrictive, proprietary. Getting lots of responses. Proprietary. All right, number two. Instead of stating that a chair seat must be 18 inches high, you should specify a blank. Range, lots of responses coming in. Very good. A specification is a description of the blank, functional or performance characteristic of an item. Physical. Lots of responses coming in for physical. All right, good job. Physical. All right, next question. If you need a large piece of equipment to be installed, it is often recommended that you request vendors to do a blank blank as part of your specs. Site visit. Lots of responses coming in on that one as well. All right. Next question. The purpose of a specification is to obtain products or services that are suitable for the state's needs in a blank, blank manner. Cost effective. Time saving, clear and concise. We've got several responses. Cost effective. All right, good job. All right, moving on. So we're gonna discuss, we're gonna show you slides and you, we're gonna read over them and then in the chat box, please put what you see that's missing from these specifications that should be included. So we're first gonna start with lawn care service. It says blanket order to supply lawn care services for the agency for the period beginning July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Quantity is 12 months. Vendors to mow lawn at least twice per month. Vendors to weed eat and edge driveways and walkways as needed. Vendors to trim bushes, shrubs, and hedges as needed. Blow off all driveways and walkways. So please put in the chat box what some information that's missing off of these specifications for lawn care services. Define as needed, what's the location, size of the area to be cared for, debris removal. Again, location and size, how large is the lawn, site visits. All good answers. Mm -hmm. We'll give you a few more minutes. Work days and weekends. Does the vendor have insurance? What to do with clippings and limbs afterwards? <clears throat> Size, hours, insurance, specific start end times, what days, what are the hours of service and operation? 
Good job, guys. So we're going to show you now. This is what the specification or scope of work should look like for lawn care services. As you can see, I'm not going to read through all these. As you can see, it goes into more detail of what exactly they're doing and the frequency because, of course, lawn care services, you're going to do more work in the summer when it grows faster and less in the winter when it doesn't. So as you can see here, it shows the frequency breakdown for the scope of work. So I'll go over a little while. Blanket order to supply lawn care services for agency for the period beginning July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Quantity is 12 months. So eight months of the year on a weekly basis. April through November, you're going to mow all lawn spaces, edge along all sidewalks, curb adjacent to all parking lots and driveways, blowing off all sidewalks, parking lots, and driveways of any and all debris, removal of associated trash and debris, including but not limited to litter, leaves, branches, and pine straw, trimming, weed eating of grass around buildings, trees, outdoor seating, fences, and outdoor fixtures. So on a bi-weekly basis, so December through March, which is four months, you're going to mow all lawn spaces, edging along all sidewalks, curbs adjacent to all parking lots, so this is just more of the same specifications as the weekly, just a little more in detail for those months. And then you have monthly basis. And so as you can see, the frequency breakdown was a, a huge part of this where it goes into more concise detail. All right, so the next one is microwavable bowls. The quantity is 1,200 cases. And these are the specs that were given. The plastic bowl, the size 1.6 liter, seven cups, and warp resistant. So what additional specifications would you need? Color, how many per pack, how many come in each case? Do they need a lid, price per bowl? Are they PBA free? Is there a warranty? All good. Shape, washable, disposable, range of comparable size. All right, so some additional specifications would be the color, with lid, any color, warp resistant, freezer, dishwasher, microwavable safe, package, six folds and lids per case, or equal, Rubbermaid or equal. So the next slide is going to be repairs. So peer repairs. Quantity one lot. There's, as you can see, there's not a lot of specs on this one. Vendor to supply labor and equipment, which is very broad, to repair peer at agency's location. Vendor will replace 15 deck boards that will be supplied by agency. And vendor will also supply and replace floor piling. What all information is missing on peer repairs to give, make sure this job is done successfully. What type of wood is needed for the boards? Location, type of material for the pilings, equipment needed, where's the pier? We need a site visit, vendor insurance requirements, time frames, insurance, uh, size of pilings, hours, equipment needed, warranty and dimensions, man hour insurance, location, material type, nails, permits, removal, 
strength of the piling, start and end times, repair inspection requirements. Lots of answers coming in. Give a few more minutes to get a few more responses before we move on. Some of the same, what to do with the trash, start and end times, site visits, disposal, cleanup requirements. All right, so let's take a look at what it should look like. Vendor to supply, labor and equipment to repair peer at agency's location. As a lot of you said, vendor will remove, dispose of, and replace 15 damaged 2 inch by 6 inch by 4 foot wooden pier deck boards. New boards will be supplied by the agency. Vendor will supply and replace four creosote pressure treated round wooden pilings, 10 foot by 12 inches diameter. Pilings must be set 4 foot into the ground below water, and the old pilings must be removed and disposed of by vendor. Agency does request a mandatory job site visit. So good job on that. That was a very good one. We have one more that we're going to do, and then we'll go from there. All right, and this one's uh, just a wrist watch. So a wrist watch, quantity 100. You can read the specs that were given. Buckle and band to be made of high quality, hand polished stainless steel. The size is 1.69 inches. Watch face to be made of hardened mineral glass. Crack and scratch resistant. Cobalt blue. Hand movement to be highest precision. Silver oxide battery. Watch must be adjustable to fit on wrist. And water resistant for 30 minutes. Okay, we've got some answers coming in. Packaging, brand, men or women's, battery or self-wind, warranty, male or female. Again, brand and warranty, warranty. Um, packaging, movement of highest precision is subjective. Price per watch, size of watch, dial numbering, quantity per case, warranty, shape of face, digital and analog, delivery time, All good answers. A um, few other things would be the limited lifetime warranty. Is it all equal? And the main factor, the key to success throughout the procurement cycle is through teamwork between the agencies and the Office of State, State Procurement so that the state receives the correct necessary goods and services in a prompt, efficient manner while getting the best value for its dollar. So one thing that agencies need to remember is that the Office of State Procurement will work with you to gather the specifications needed in order to get you exactly what you need. 
So if you're having problems writing specifications or getting exactly what you need to get the shopping cart to state procurement, work with the office before submitting the shopping cart. Sometimes it's easier to reach out to the vendor, get a quote, so that whenever you submit it, you already have a starting point. You can submit any questions you have through the chat box at this time. Sean, did you want to add anything? Well, if no one else has any questions, then this will conclude our presentation, and we thank you for joining in.